tells me that you have no recollection of me, however. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. It's time to get wild. Wildly overrated. I'm Michael Jordan. This is Niche Gamer's video review supplemental for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is a beautiful game on its surface. The art style is a unique blend of watercolors and pastels mixed with the design principles of Miyazaki. It is a refreshing style choice, and our protagonist Link is animated masterfully. Character customization, enemies, landscapes, and weapons all have that unique Zelda feel with a slight twist. Problem is, all that high-end detail that they have added in beauty comes at a massive cost to the frame rate. At points, I had the game come to a dead stop, and a couple of those times the game actually crashed because of it. The average player will be yanked right out of the experience because of this. Let's get this out of the way before I really dig into the gameplay. The frame rate issues will impact your gameplay. Yes, there are frame rate issues, and it does translate into a bad gaming experience in general. Anytime you decide to fight enemies where there might be slightly too much going on, or if you ride your horse for a certain amount of distance, you'll have certain things popping in and out of the game, as well as massive lags in the frame rate. We're talking about 10 to 20 frames per second. Add to this the potential for your controller to be desynced and you will have a recipe for frustration and disaster. Breath of the Wild also suffers from massive scaling issues that can make the game a pain in the ass for inexperienced players just jumping into the game. But by the time you finish the game, it becomes entirely too easy. The game has several interesting paths to upgrade your player's ability to survive the world, but are stunted by how they're implemented and earned. Where the game could have had 30 interesting and meaningful temples spread across the map with several sets of puzzles within them, as well as some light combat, the game gives you 120 uninteresting puzzles so they can use them as fast travel points in the map. Inventory upgrades are done in a similar fashion where there are 900 forest imps spread around the map, except that you only need 441 to max out your inventory slots. Most of these you will not be able to see right on the onset and you will stumble across them. If you do decide to get over the maximum amount you need for your slots, the game literally rewards you with a piece of poo, which is kind of telling and almost mocking of the player for going through such a ridiculous task. Another disappointment are the four divine beasts which take the place of the typical Zelda dungeon. While they have some interesting mechanics, they have relatively no combat outside of the boss fight you engage in at the end, and no cool unique items that help you traverse the world. Weapons are essentially worthless in the game and they break quite easily, leaving you to pick up another random item from a fallen foe or scattered across the map. The system is rather annoying and swapping between weapons in fights and sometimes forcing you to change your playstyle completely sucks the enjoyment out of combat. The fact that the game seems to be lacking in combat in general kind of seems like they knew this was an issue. The world of Breath of the Wild from a gameplay standpoint is vast but deeply devoid of interaction. Outside of key areas, the majority of the land is fleshed out with wildlife, bugs, plants that you can hunt, gather, and collect. Sadly, the hunting, gathering, collecting, and cooking aspect of the game feels like it is half finished and unintuitive. Cooking and making potions and elixirs is a random stab in the dark, and you'll generally have no idea what you're making when you try to make it unless you have it memorized or written down the recipe from your trial and error, quests, or other conversations with random NPCs. The saving grace of the gameplay is the exploration hands down. Being able to go just about anywhere and see the world that they have made, sculpted, and designed is a bit magical on the level of Shadow of the Colossus, just without any of the meaning behind the game. This might be enough for some people, but it does not excuse all the massive flaws this game has in design and in its errors. There's some good music in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but nothing epic like we've come to expect with a typical Zelda game. Many tracks are 10 second clips on repeat, and if you're in an area affected by this music, you will be quickly annoyed. It would have been nice if they stuck with the golden rule of open world games, silence is golden. They should have let the wind, rain, animals, and world sing the background song for them instead of making these tripe clips. One thing that just kills me is the voice acting. It's almost as if Nintendo hired the cast of The Room to voice act the game. I almost looked for Tommy Wiseau's name in the credits and saying, oh, hi, horsey, was stuck in my head for a week. A standout in the Legend of Zelda series since its move to the Super NES are the stories and just how accessible they are. Breath of the Wild is an extreme and terrible departure from that. Link wakes up from a shrine of resurrection with no clue as to what's going on with all his memories wiped out. 
The memories cover the basics of the story because really there is no story outside of that. There's only an end goal of freeing the Divine Beast, killing Ganon, and listening to some dialogue that is voice acted badly. Side missions don't really help to flesh out the world at all either. None of the one-off characters are involved in the main quest, and there's nothing that really makes you care for the NPCs of this game. In general, it's a steep departure from previous titles and a big departure from good storytelling. The sad thing is there's an amazing story here with a really well-written Princess Zelda if you look for it. If the memories were connected to places you needed to go to complete the game or made it so that you would have to go to where the memories were in the path to going to those areas instead of points that are a pain in the ass to find and get to, you would have an amazing character arc and story that would have been completely paced with the exploration of the game. Instead, we get a story presented as an option when it should be mandatory. Ultimately, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a game with grand ideas from a team that has no idea how to execute them and no time to learn. It's a brilliant first attempt, but that does not make it a brilliant game. Trying something different does not equate to doing something proficiently or well. As a launch title, it's a disappointment to say the least, and as a Zelda game, it is downright devastating. As a long-term fan of the series, playing every game since I've been five, I feel that it is finally time to strike off Zelda games as a must-buy series without question. Do not listen to the day one reviews, and do not be attached to nostalgia when looking at this game. This is easily the weakest game in the Legend of Zelda series in the last 20 years, and with some simple design choices combined with some time and QA to correctly fix issues that it has, it could have produced the best game in the series. That being said, it is still worth your money if you own a Nintendo Switch, but it is not worth buying a Nintendo Switch 4. Just pick it up on the Wii U if you have a Wii U, or just wait for the price to come down, or if you already bought the console when a steady stream of games has already come out. You must save her, my daughter. Thank you for watching this video review. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want to help us out, feel free to check out our Patreon page.